All right, so today I'm going to talk about the HVAC system for the house. I've got the motor, the fan motor. It started making noise, which is an indication of the bearings going bad, and it's making like a squilling or a whining noise. So it was pretty loud. I could hear it actually in the house when it started running. And normally the fan runs, you don't normally hear it in the house. You can hear it outside, you don't hear it in the house. So I called Granger, and Granger is a great source to talk to. You basically take a picture of your motor, uh, get all the specs off of it, call Granger, tell them what you've got, and they'll look it up and cross-reference a uh, motor for what you need. So here's my replacement motor that I got. This is a, uh, here's basically the specs on it, 208 to 230 volt, uh, 825 RPM, and mine was a one over 12, um, horsepower rated. This one's actually variable one over eight to one over 15. This one is a one amp type of motor. Here it says it's reversible. It's a 48 inch frame, which is very important. That's what mine is now. And down here, it's a five microfarad capacitor, 370 volt. So just to show you some more, this is the part number 5DVX4. This fits the pain HVAC heat pump, which is what I've got for my house. Uh, while I was there, I went ahead and picked up a new capacitor. This is the uh, part number for it. You see it's a 40 uh, plus 5 microfarad capacitor. It's around 370 volt. And just to show you what it looks like, this is what it looks like. I think I told you recently, I had my HVAC guy come out. He had to put a capacitor on the exact same unit because it wasn't working. Um, and now we just start running the heat and we start hearing the fan making some noise. So I'm like, you know what? Let me about it, go ahead and put a brand new capacitor and a brand new motor on the fan. So everything's new and the capacitor he put on there, I'll keep it as a spare so I have a backup. So I'm gonna walk you through what's involved in changing out the capacitor and changing out the motor. See what you think. Uh, there's a capacitor we just changed recently see the cobwebs and stuff in here we'll go ahead and clean that out a little bit just some maintenance clean it out but like I say we just changed that capacitor not about two three months ago so that's new but I'm gonna put the new one in here just so everything's new to go with the motor now before you just go grab it on this thing if you didn't know a capacitor holds voltage in there so it's very slow to discharge it will over time but this thing was just running and I just pulled the breaker as you saw up here so when you do need to discharge it so way to discharge it you basically uh, most people just kind of take a screwdriver and put it across it's gonna arc and discharge it but it's a little dangerous so if they tell you to take like a, a 5 watt resistor 20k and touch it across the terminals and you can discharge it a little safer all right so once you get your motor off you basically chase the three wires. Got a brown, a yellow, and a black. They come through here. Your brown goes over to your capacitor here, right there. Your yellow goes down here. And your black goes right up here. So all we're gonna do now, before we unhook anything, Gotta make sure on our new motor what we got here for wires because it's not an exact motor and wire it is different so I know brown with the white stripe is not used on this motor and black should go to black and white is 
going to be our other wire that we use. So we'll do something like this. We'll get these through that conduit and we'll hook it all up. So here's a nice little schematic for us here. Brown and white's not used. We're going to go with this three line here. Brown, white, black. Ended up just moving this a little further away. Didn't even have to cut it. I had plenty of room here. The shaft's long, but plenty of room not to hit anything. Left the studs long. Got my fan blade on. Got my conduit on. The wires pulled through. So I just have to fish the wires down and then put this on. All right, make sure you get this tight. And there's a drain plug here. There's one top and bottom. So make sure you pop this off. If you're gonna be, um, if it's a bottom, facing to the bottom like mine is. So it's gonna pop this out just like that. Okay, make sure you do that so the moisture has a way to drain out. See what I'm doing? Feeding the wires in here and down here. And they come through to the outside like this. Nice and neat. Just like that. And we'll pull them through here. Just like so. Way they're nice and neat out of the way of the fan blade spinning. Do a little test, make sure it spins and it does. And I've got to put the bolts in here to hold the motor tight. But you see, we're spinning, it's not hitting anything, plenty of clearance. All four nuts are in place. Motor's now tight. You can see it's centered properly in there. The conduit's protecting our wires going across. Our wires are ran to the outside. Just have to hook them up now, change out the capacitor. And even though we discharged it before, I always like to go in here and just double check. You can see the meter down there, zero, there just like to make sure it stays discharged so we're good basically we're just loosening the capacitor here so we can take it up and out so we'll do that like this and see this one's actually rated lower than what I need this is a 35 by 5 I need a 40 Good thing I got one. That wire's kind of short, so we can go ahead and pull that wire off, and then I'll pull that okay. out. And we just pull it out, like so, and there you go. See, this one's not even rated as high as the one that should be in there. So I'll take that out, put it here, take our new one. Pretty hefty, pretty hefty there, big boy. Now a little trick, our bracket isn't quite big enough to hold this the way it was, so you take it off, you just bend it like so around, and then you 
bolt it back up. So, it won't go in the way it did, but it'll hold it. That's all that matters. So you run your black wire, had to put a crimp terminal on it. It goes right up here to our board where the other black wire was. Crimps in just like that. And that's done. The brown and white, we snip the end off. I'll put some tape over here to tape this out of the way. Our white wire basically replaces our yellow, it goes to the cap, which the yellow is already going over here. So the yellow is going to go over here to the cap like that. The brown wire goes over here to the fan and the blue wire goes to the herm right there. Now my bracket wasn't going to work very well on that side. So I'm going to drill a new hole and put my bracket over here like that. So the cap actually is going to sit down here on the bottom with the bracket like that. It's going to be fantastic. And then we'll be good to go. We can make that work right in there. Probably be good right there. It worked. Drop this in here. Like this. Push that over. Okay, that's tight. Now squeeze that around so now that holds that beautiful do the one side of this capacitor like so so there's our brown fan wire there hooked up and then we've got our uh, herm wire come in here to one side of this like that and then we got our capacitor wire inside of that okay so capacitor is the white wire from the fan there brown wire from the fan there and herm wire there black wire going to the circuit board and the brown white stripe there so i need to tape this up for turning power on then we'll uh plug that in make sure it works and if everything works we'll pull the power we'll cover all this up and we should be good to go just turn the breaker on everything seems to be working it's noticeably quiet quieter I guess I could say fan appears to be centered and smooth I'm feeling for is to see if the air is coming out is hot or cold. If your air conditions on, you should be feeling hot air coming out. And I'm starting to feel hot air come out, which is what you want in the winter time. If you feel cold air coming out, it means you put heat in the house. Okay, all back together. Now,
one thing I didn't notice, my actual motor's turning clockwise instead of counterclockwise. So you gotta look at it from the underside there. So I need to reverse that. I flipped the blades, it didn't make any difference. It's still blowing down instead of out. So now I need to reverse the motor because this is a universal motor. And apparently so they give you this nice little plug right here on the motor. You can actually pull this apart, flip it over, plug it back in. And now our motor should run the opposite direction. So now we'll see if that fixed the problem. So now we don't want to mushroom our condenser. We want the air to be sucked through and then out, not to push down in there. And to finish this video off, I think it's working now. <laughs> so the last piece of the puzzle was to turn the fan around to blow the right way. So once I had the motor spin the right way, then I turned the fan blade around because your fan blade is oriented to pull a certain way. So when it was turned the opposite way, while it was trying to work, it just wasn't blowing enough volume. So as you can see, it's blowing a lot of volume now. So now I would say if you're not sure your fan's orientation or maybe it was even installed wrong, switch it around and see if you get more volume. If you got more volume, it's gonna make it more efficient. It's gonna pull more air through and it's gonna make it heat and cool a lot more efficiently. So this thing should be hot rod now.